Thank you for the introduction and welcome everybody to Imagine Justice 2021. Please, if you will, indulge me in taking a journey for just, just a moment. Behind the veil of justice, racism is revealed. With the blood of those who dare to challenge and speak out, soaking through the fabric of our country. The shifting of this reality seems to be remembered mostly by landmark cases like Roe v. Wade, Brown versus the Board of Education, or generational shifting legislation like the desegregation of our country, the emancipation of enslaved people, and most recently, the expansion of hate crimes are often fought in courtrooms and chambers, boardrooms, and even sometimes golf courses. But the reality is, this is not where the bulk of the work happens. You see, those decisions and signings are only the face of the work. And they're no more representative of the work itself than your face is representative of your fullness as a human being. You see, there are people experiencing the conditions we work on. Oftentimes, these people are overlooked and overtalked, under-resourced. There are, there are actual people impacted by undocumented employees catching COVID and not being able to work. There are children without parents because they've been sentenced to life in prison for nonviolent offenses. Without the courage to share these experiences and relive their trauma, no one would ever hear this impact and our work would be completely disconnected. It's the tireless efforts of partners like the Black Prisoners Caucus, the People's Institute, folks like FUJ, and the dairy farmers in Eastern Washington who refused to work without proper accommodations to protect themselves and their loved ones. It's people like Mr. Martinez and Maru, like Nikita Oliver, Mary Flowers, John Page. It's people like them who are oftentimes, they don't have legal representation, they do the work without legislative backing or resources to really make an impact systemically. But just for conversation's sake this evening, let's just imagine for a little minute. Imagine if justice worked for everyone. If undocumented farm workers had supplemental resources during the off season. Imagine if farm workers and incarcerated people alike actually made a living wage. Imagine if incarcerated people who are, were gainfully employed by the companies that benefit from their labor. Imagine if our community partners, who not only live the experiences, but have also dedicated themselves to learn the impact of the system, had the resources to accomplish their efforts and to minimize the impact of the systems. Imagine if they had a statewide legal aid network Imagine if they had a legion of legal support and lobbyists acting not just on their best interests, but with the recommendation and direction from a place of experience. Impacted people don't really have a choice to be impacted or not. They are all in whether they want to be or not. All in. Let's think about that for a minute. That's the cost. That's the bar that's been set because the people that we represent and who are impacted by these systems, they are all in. I ask you today, what are you willing to invest? What are you actually willing to give up? Imagine if we here, everybody under the sound of my voice, all of us who are collected here today, made a commitment to be fully committed. We at CLS are in alignment with our community partners and we have made the decision we are committed. We are all in. Won't you please join us? Join our efforts to support the folks who are on the ground during these community movements. And they are the actual bedrock of social change in our country. Will you join us in supporting their efforts, pushing that advocacy, and once again, changing society? Thank you. And I hope you enjoy the program.